Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we will talk about ectopic pregnancy as part of our gynecology series. An ectopic pregnancy is per definition a pregnancy in which the fertilized egg attaches in a location other than the endometrium. Implantation of the fertilized egg occurs usually five to six days after fertilization and is usually in the superior or lateral wall of the endometrium. We differentiate different types of ectopy depending on the location. Different locations bring different risks of complications with them. The first type of ectopic pregnancy is a tubal pregnancy. This is a pregnancy that occurs within the fallopian tube and it is the most common location of ectopic pregnancy. The next type of ectopic pregnancy is the interstitial pregnancy. It is a pregnancy that occurs within the interstitial portion of the fallopian tube, which is the segment that connects the tube to the endometrial cavity. Other types are the abdominal, the ovarian, or the cervical ectopic pregnancy, which are very rare and make up together around 1% of ectopic pregnancies. We can also differentiate ectopic pregnancies by the clinical features and the associated risks. There is the complicated ectopic pregnancy, which is an ectopic pregnancy associated with severe bleeding either in the form of hemoperitoneum or vaginal bleeding, also the rupture of the fallopian tube or the occurrence of hemodynamic compromise. A complicated ectopic pregnancy is a gynecological emergency that requires surgical treatment. An uncomplicated ectopic pregnancy is an ectopic pregnancy without any features of complicated ectopic pregnancy. So there is no rupture of the anatomical structures or bleeding. It may resolve spontaneously in some cases. There are several associated risk factors that make the occurrence of an ectopic pregnancy more likely. The main reason for developing an ectopic pregnancy is the anatomic alteration of the fallopian tubes. These alterations may be congenital or it may be due to a history of pelvic inflammatory disease, a previous ectopic pregnancy, past surgeries involving the fallopian tubes, endometriosis or having a bicornuate uterus. Other non-anatomical risk factors include the insertion of an intrauterine device into the uterus, a history of infertility or the use of hormone therapy. In the next point, we will talk about the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Generally, it is to say that a sexually active woman of reproductive age with abdominal pain should undergo a pregnancy test regardless of contraception use. It is a non-invasive, low-cost test, which can help us to check for the HCG levels. We can also measure the zero beta HCG level, which would typically be high in an ectopic pregnancy. However, the HCG level only starts to rise after the eighth day of ovulation. When the beta-HCG level reaches a level of over 1,500 to 2,000 milliunits per milliliter, we call it the beta-HCG discriminatory level. This is the beta-HCG level at which an intrauterine pregnancy should be visible on ultrasound. The inability to visualize a uterine pregnancy on ultrasound at a discriminatory level strongly suggests an ectopic pregnancy. It is also to keep in mind that multiple pregnancies, so a pregnancy with twins, triplets or maybe even more, 
have higher beta HCG levels. To get a more accurate idea of the development of the HCG levels, we can do serial beta HCG measurements. This allows for better diagnostic accuracy than a single beta HCG level in differentiating intrauterine from ectopic pregnancies. For a serious HCG level test, we should measure the serum levels every 48 hours. An insufficient rise in HCG level may indicate an ectopic pregnancy and a decrease of HCG may indicate a spontaneous abortion. In patients with severe or prolonged vaginal bleeding, we may observe signs of anemia clinically and in the complete blood count. When an ectopic pregnancy is confirmed, we have to check the patient's blood type to identify patients who might need rhesus immunization. We may also do a transvaginal ultrasound, which is considered to be the best initial imaging test for determining the location of the pregnancy. An empty uterine cavity in combination with a thickened endometrial lining indicates an ectopic pregnancy. In ultrasound examinations, we can see the tubal ring sign, also called blob sign, which is an echogenic ring that surrounds an unruptured ectopic pregnancy. This is specific for ectopic pregnancies occurring in the fallopian tube. In an interstitial ectopic pregnancy, we may see the interstitial line sign, which shows as an echogenic line that extends from the gestational sac into the upper uterus. In some cases, we may have to do an exploratory laparoscopy. This is usually done in unstable patients, which are suspected of having an ectopic pregnancy, which may or may not have ruptured. In the last point, we will talk about the treatment options. In hemodynamically unstable patients with a ruptured or impending rupture of an ectopic pregnancy, an emergency surgery is indicated. In all other patients, the decision for medical, expectant or surgical treatment of ectopic pregnancy should be guided by the clinical, laboratory and radiological findings as well as patient-informed choice based on a discussion of the benefits and risks of each approach. Medicational treatment includes giving methotrexate, which inhibits the folate-dependent steps in the DNA synthesis to terminate the rapidly dividing ectopic pregnancy. Indications for methotrexate are having an uncomplicated ectopic pregnancy or when the patient is hemodynamically stable. Also, the mass cannot be ruptured and the beta HCG levels should be below 2000 milliunits per milliliter. The surgical options are a salbingostomy and a salbingectomy, so either the opening of the fallopian tube and removal of products of conception or the removal of the affected fallopian tube. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.